do last night anyway? I know you didn't go skating because you left your skates here. I don't know. I was just too tired. Maybe I'll go to... Well, why don't you just skate right on back there and get your little uniform? Because here comes somebody now. You take care of yourself. Bobby! Bobby! Well, what do you know? You must have liked the food. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I like, I like the food. Well, why don't you sit right over here and I'll fetch you a menu. Okay, I'll wait for Bobby. Thanks. She went to change, but, uh... I'll take your order. Special today, salmon steak. that what they did is true. You're simply not eating, are you? I can't eat, Doctor. You keep me lo locked in here. My head in those bandages, and you, you keep drugging me all the Please, time. Please, Mrs. It's... Carr. The situation isn't any more comfortable for us than it is for you. But you made it necessary, and I cannot and will not permit you to make it worse. Don't you understand? My stomach can't accept such food. Well, maybe you need some exercise. All right. If you promise to behave, I'll have Sharky walk you up and down the corridor several times a day. But it will have to be under very strict schedule. I can only think of my husband. By now, he must think that. I'm dead, don't you understand? At the moment, you're simply described as missing. Doctor, isn't there some way? Some way you could get word to him? I mean, whatever way you would choose, just to let him know that I'm all right. Uh, it's out of the question. I mean, I, I, you wouldn't tell him where I am or what's happening, just... Just to reassure him. <laughs> Mrs. Carr, it simply can't be done. Not now. Oh. Oh, how long is this going to go on? How long am I going to be a prisoner here? Well, what you really don't appreciate, Mrs. Carr, is the fact that we are your prisoners just as much as you are ours. You know, it pains me very much, Mrs. Carr, but please understand, you brought it on yourself. Now, what is this all about? Why are you bothering me? Oh, oh, but please, First, I you go swoop it around the silver spoon, and now you do. What are you trying to do? Get me fired? Oh, huh? you're hurting me. Not as bad oh, as I'm going to hurt you if you don't tell oh, me let what me you go. want. They don't like nosy don't people around here. Me. Lady! Mrs. Carr, what are you doing here? Regidium. You're I, Regidium. Doctor, it wasn't my fault. I, she pushed right past me and went right through the gate. I, I couldn't stop her. Beth! Beth! Yes, yes. I take Mr. Kin Mr. Kincaid down to his room at once. Yes, of course. This way, Mr. Kincaid, please. Sharky, sit her down and then go out and close the door. Are you sure you want me to leave? I think mean, she might try something. Oh, all right. You might as well stay. There's not much as you don't know at this point. I would like.
like to explain something. The only reason I came here was to discuss some personal matters with this orderly, Mr. Sharkey. Why the hell did you come back? That's what I want to know. Because I thought you were mistaken about when he left this clinic. I have a photograph of him. Oh, she may have a gun, Doc. That hmm? is ridiculous. I'm not with the police. I'm a reporter. In this instant, Mrs. Carr, that's just as critical. If she was telling the truth, this is my picture. So where'd you get it? Did Bobby give it to you? Doctor, you told me that Mr. Sharkey left this clinic about a month ago. But that sign was put up only about ten days ago. You tracked me down, huh? What's so important you have to track me down? Look. The questions I have to ask are very important, but I haven't got the slightest intention of, of doing any kind of story about this clinic. Oh, but you have a story now, don't you, Mrs. Carr? Hey, wait a second. What, all, what is all this? What, what, what kind of story are you talking about, Doc? Huh? That man, his name is Ira Gideon, and he's an embezzler. He's wanted by the police. Well, wait a minute. There's more to it than that, though, isn't there? Our doctor is a plastic surgeon. You're going to change his looks, aren't you? Doctor, Mr. Kincaid is very upset. You may have to give him a sedative. Ah, uh, you mean Mr. Gideon, huh? <laughs> you mean this idiot knows? <gasps> as well as our lady reporter? God, how can things go so wrong so quickly? Mr. Gideon wants to know what we're going to do. He wants to be sure that he's not in any... Yeah, well, he will be if we let her go. Right. What in God's name are we going to do with her? There's no problem. You just give her one of those needles of yours. Shut up! I don't want to hear another word out of you, Sharky. This whole damn mess is your fault. I was just trying to be practical, Doc. All right, I'll give you something practical to do. Take Mrs. Clown to one of the little rooms in the old wing. Has a key. One of these. Right, I'll do that. Right now. Right now. I'll do that right now, Doc. Well, Ken, what happens to that million dollar fee now? Oh, we'll... Well, we'll just have to hold her here until this surgery's completed. Until uh, Gideon's face is healed and he can leave the clinic. And what happens if they come looking for Mrs. R? Well, I can't think of everything. Well, we had better. Is this her bag? I better go and see Gideon. Reassure him that nothing has changed. Kenneth, close the door. Look at this. Don't you remember what Mrs. Carr said? That she was scheduled on a flight in a couple of hours. Well, she's going to miss her flight. What if she doesn't? What if she does fly to San Francisco? As I said, Mrs. Carr, you brought it on yourself. told me all the arrangements had been made, including security. It was completely unexpected, Mr. Gideon. What I want to know is, what should I expect next? What in God's name are you going to do with this woman? Believe me, she represents no danger to you. Yes, but Dr. Bryson keeps telling me, but she's still here, and all she has to do is step one foot outside that gate. <clears throat> Mrs. Carr is not leaving, Mr. Gideon. Not before you do. But that may be weeks, even after the operation. The healing process... We will keep her here as long as necessary. Isn't that right, Doctor? Oh, uh, yes, of course we will. Although there is a, another alternative. You could leave as soon as I remove the stitches. But that, uh, 
That would mean traveling in bandages. And looking like a man in hiding? No, thank you. I'm sure these aren't stupid enough to have accepted my suicide at face value. I'm sure they're still on the lookout. Mrs. But... Carr will be taken care of. Please, take my word for it. She is well known here. Don't you realize the Monticello newspapers cover her disappearance every single day? Yes. But she did not disappear in Monticello. That is the important point. They're not looking for her here. Yes. That's true. Thanks to Beth. Well, it was fortunate that Mrs. Carr and I have the same hair color. Enjoy your fight. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mrs. Carr? Smoking or not smoking? Non-smoking, please. Right? Let's see. Yes, I have a nice window seat for you. Thank you. Good flight. Thank you. I had a very nice flight. Although I kept myself quite busy. Would you like some coffee or tea? Coffee, regular? Uh, nothing for me, please. Okay. Ma'am, would you like some coffee or tea? Oh, nothing, thank you. What a lovely phrase. It was a Christmas gift from my husband. Oh, I wish I had a husband with tape like that. <laughs> Thank you. Wasn't it nice of the car to have given his wife such an unusual bracelet? Everybody noticed it. That's seven fifty uh, on the middle, lady. Was a dollar for the tolls. Here you are. Thank you. Keep the change. Thank you. Have a nice time in San Francisco. Oh, thank you. Everyone in the country thinks Mrs. Carr has disappeared somewhere out there, Mr. Gideon. Just as you did. But I am here. I don't want anything to go wrong. So you get your problems straightened up right now. Why didn't you eat it all, Mrs. Carr? Didn't you like the food? You know, our chef is an excellent cook, you know. The Rexford prides itself on the quality of its cuisine. Yes, I'm sure it's a very lovely place. Well, it is, usually. We have very distinguished patients. You'd be surprised at some of the well-known faces that have come here to be, uh, oh, shall we say, restored. Oh, I doubt that you know your job well. You're quite right. I know my field very well. You know, the Rexford Clinic is not a factory, Mrs. Carr. Nor do I deal only in cosmetic surgery. I perform a great many operations for correctional purposes. Many of them for charity cases. Oh, is that what I am, a charity case? Because I'm certainly not paying for this. I would have been very proud to have had a hand in creating a face as beautiful as yours, Mrs. Carr. And I'm also very proud to say that I've helped a great many people, some of them youngsters, who would have gone through life suffering because, because of their deformities. Doctor, why are you defending yourself to me? Because, uh, my dear young woman, you, you, you obviously think that I'm some sort of criminal. Ira Gideon is a criminal, and you knew exactly what you were doing when you admitted him here. A patient is a patient. His motives are none of my business. Now, if you'll excuse me. Doctor. Please, can't you... Could you please let my husband know? Can I talk to you for a minute? Can't you see I'm working? 
Can't you see I'm a customer? Look, I told you everything I had to say. Now, why can't you leave me alone? Look, all I want is a couple minutes. If you don't give me that, I'll just keep coming back here till you do. It's your stomach, honey. And my death will be on your conscience. Two minutes. But listen, you know, you really shouldn't bug me about Matt Sharkey. It's not worth finding. How old do you know the guy? I know him well enough to know that he goes after what he wants until he gets it, and then he leaves you flat. Get my drift? Well, you obviously don't care much about the guy. What difference does it make to you if you tell me where I can find him? Because I can't, okay? Why can't you? Because he doesn't want to be found. How do you know that? Did he, did he tell you that? Gee, one of your ancestors must have been a mule. Well, come on, you can tell me. Was he doing something wrong? Was he doing something illegal? He's working in one of those places that doesn't want publicity. It's one of those private hospitals with a lot of famous people, you know, and they don't want people knowing. Now, do you understand? No, not really. Look, Sharky's making a lot of money in this place, and if there's one thing Sharky loves, it's the green well, stuff. Well, I have absolutely no intention of making the guy lose his job. All I want to do is talk to him. Well, you still haven't told me why. Well, it's, it's personal. I didn't think you were trying to sell him a car. Look, do you want me to pay you for the information? If that's what you want. Look, I'll tell you what I want. I want you to forget you ever heard or saw this name, okay? Can you do me that favor? I may not make as much as Sharky, but I'd like to keep this job just the same. This yours? Fifty-three. We got a roller skating rink in the back or something. What? what? Oh no, they're bobbing skates. She's crazy about skating. She got a roller rink down the street every night. Okay. Yeah. We'll simply have to move as fast as we can. I'm going to schedule the operation for tomorrow morning. Does Featherstone know? Well, I've asked him to come in. Speed isn't the answer to this problem, Kenneth. You know it isn't. Nevertheless, the faster we can get rid of Gideon, the better. The faster he pays his fee, the better. Come in. You wanted to see me? Oh, come in, on. Yes, I was just telling Beth that uh, I'm going to operate on Mr. Kincaid tomorrow morning. Eh? Huh? What? I'm going to operate on Mr. Kincaid tomorrow morning. But we were going to discuss our procedures again. Well, I think we've discussed it enough. The man's getting restless. Uh, he's been restless since the minute he arrived here. I don't like that, Mr. Kincaid, Kenneth. There's something wrong with him. Something wrong about his motivation. He is a business executive, Dr. Featherstone, and wants to look younger. That's not uncommon. Uh. Well, you still plan on performing the skin graft? Well, I was trying to determine how to do without it in order to uh, speed up the healing process, but... Uh, uh, what about uh, the dermatone? Is that working properly? Well, uh, that's what I want you to check on immediately. Oh. Uh, also bring the photographs, so we can discuss the incision lines again. Yeah, all right. Now, directly. I still don't understand all this haste, Janet. Please, doctor, do as my husband asks. Right. Easy, Beth. We don't want Featherstone to know any more than he does. It's bad enough that Sharky knows I'm our I'm not business. worried about Sharky, or that half-blind, deaf old man. It's Mrs. Carr who worries me. Maybe we should feed her intravenously. Well, she's promised to eat. That's not what I meant. Kenneth. It would be so simple to put something in the IV. I don't want to hear that. Kenneth, the problem won't be solved when Gideon leaves. She will still be here. She will still have to be dealt with. Kenneth, we will have one million dollars and no way to spend it. We can't keep her a prisoner for the rest of her life. I cannot do such a thing. 
Doc Featherstone tells me you want the uh, OR cleaned up. Yes, that's correct. You and Wally take care of it. And be sure and do a thorough job. I always do a thorough job, Doc. Maybe you can't do it, Kenneth. But what about him?